Grandpa's Barbies and Kim. It's so good to be with you again. You know, I just love doing these tutorials for you. So thank you so much for tuning in and valuing what I have to offer you. It just feels so good to know that I'm doing something that helps you. Okay, let's get started. Do you remember the tutorial on the hormone estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone? That was tutorial number nine. In that tutorial, I introduced you to those three hormones, and we discussed each of their functions. So now, you're ready to learn a lot more about them. You see why it's important to watch the tutorials in order? Today, I'm going to teach you the symptoms that indicate having too much or too little of each of those hormones. And that's going to help you because... If things are really wacky with you, if you have symptoms that are crazy, you might see in one of these lists which hormone you need to target to fix it. So this is going to help you know exactly what to do to make your menopause better. So today we're going to jump around a bit in both the book and the outline notes. And that's because I'm sort of giving you an overview of some things so that we're going to apply information later on. So, if you're following along in the book, we will be on page 107 for estrogen, 135 for progesterone, and 149 for testosterone. And if you are following along in the outline note, we're on page 25 for estrogen, page 31 for progesterone, and page 35 for testosterone. Now, Although I'm going to present these hormones to you one at a time, they don't present themselves to your body that way. <laughs> you see, no hormone acts in a vacuum. Some of your symptoms of menopause may result from combination of hormones acting in harmony with one another. Other symptoms may result from hormones that are counteracting each other. Still other symptoms may be the result of the predominant or strongest hormone. And sometimes your symptoms are just going to be the net effect of multiple fluctuating hormones. But today, I'll cover each hormone individually. And for each hormone, I'm going to give you a list of the symptoms that characterize an excess of that hormone and another list of the symptoms that characterize a deficiency of that hormone. Now, don't expect your symptoms to match these lists perfectly. You're not a robot. You are an evolving work in progress. And it's important to understand that it's okay for things to change over time. Just don't overanalyze the distinction. You may have symptoms from both an excess and a deficiency of a hormone, or you might have symptoms from more than one list. You may have more symptoms on one list than another. Don't worry about all that. Okay, so we are going to start with estrogen. To review, estrogen is a female hormone. So we're going to call it the pink hormone. It gives you your femininity, your dainty features that are distinctly different from those of a male. And it's also the primary hormone that you have all your reproductive life and it's the hormone you move at menopause. So we are going to begin that this pink scarf in this birch press represents your estrogen level. So here is your estrogen level. And what we're going to do is start with estrogen excess. Okay, so let's say it's overflowing. Okay, your pink scarf is just flowing all over the place. You have an excess of estrogen. What are the typical symptoms of estrogen excess? Well, you might notice increased or excessive periods. Nausea, vomiting, food craving, breast pain and tenderness, weight gain, bloating, depression, yeast infection, vaginal yeast infection, headaches, and leg cramps. Some of those symptoms sound a lot like pregnancy, don't they? Huh. Well, that's because estrogen levels are very high during pregnancy. And you might notice that some of the symptoms are similar to the symptoms of 
perimenopause. Well, why? Because during perimenopause, your estrogen levels are rising as well as falling. Remember, they're like a roller coaster during perimenopause. So let's go back to our fridge print and take our fridge, our pink estrogen scarf, and we're going to now represent estrogen efficiency. So let's say that now you have not enough estrogen. So what would be the symptoms if you didn't have enough estrogen? Well, you'd have less frequent periods or absent periods, hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, fatigue, forgetfulness, mood swings, irritability, joint stiffness or joint pain, dry skin, hair loss, vaginal dryness, urinary tract infection, urinary incontinence, and a decreased sex drive. Oh my, that looks Sounds an awful lot like the symptoms I gave you for menopause in tutorial 11, doesn't it? Yeah. See, now that makes perfect sense because menopause is a deficiency of estrogen. So, let's look at progesterone. Now, progesterone is the partner hormone to estrogen, and it's the hormone that supports the pregnancy. That's what you learn in tutorial 9. Now, I like to call progesterone a chameleon. And the reason I call it a chameleon is because progesterone can convert itself into estrogen or testosterone. It's like it's got an identity problem. So, to designate progesterone, we're going to use a multicolored scarf. Blue for testosterone, pink for estrogen, and yellow for progesterone. It's kind of like a conglomeration of the three. So, progesterone is multicolored has kind of a multiple personality disorder. <laughs> so here we have our progesterone. Let's say we're starting with progesterone excess. So we're going to go flowing over the edges, all three colors. That's our progesterone excess. What are the symptoms of progesterone excess? Well, they are fatigue, drowsiness, and depression. Ooh, that one sounds a lot like pregnancy too, doesn't it? But think about it. Progesterone levels are very high during pregnancy. Progesterone is the hormone that supports the pregnancy. So the levels are very high. So what if we go back to our French press and we lower our progesterone levels? And now we're going to represent progesterone deficiency. So here we go. Low levels of progesterone. The symptoms of Deficient progesterone are irregular or heavy periods, PMS, premenstrual syndrome, anxiety, and migraine headaches. Now, think about PMS. When you have PMS during your menstrual cycle, it occurs just before your period. Well, that's exactly when you go from having a high progesterone level to a very low progesterone level. Your progesterone level drops, it plummets. That's when you discover you have PMS. So that's why PMS is one of the symptoms. And once again, you might recall that most of the symptoms that you saw for progesterone deficiency are characteristic of early perimenopause. Because that's the first thing that happens in early perimenopause. Your progesterone drops. You learned that in tutorial 10. You see, we're connecting the dots with all these tutorials. So, what about testosterone? Okay, testosterone is the male hormone. We're going to call it our blue hormone. It's the hormone that gives men the masculine quality. Now, in women, our testosterone is outweighed by estrogen throughout our entire reproductive life until we hit menopause. So this third French press with the blue scarf in it represents testosterone. So let's start with testosterone excess. And we've got our blue testosterone scarf flowing over the edges of the French press. And the symptoms of testosterone excess are mood swing, acne, facial hair, deepening of your voice, weight gain, and an increased sex drive. Hey! Some of those symptoms sounded like menopause too, didn't they? 
Why? Well, think about it. Because in menopause, our estrogen drops so low that our testosterone, while it isn't necessarily overflowing, is dominant. The testosterone outweighs the estrogen. So now if we look at testosterone deficiency, let's put our French press in and press down our testosterone level. The symptoms of testosterone deficiency are lack of energy, difficulty having an orgasm, thinning of your pubic hair, decreased muscle mass, bone loss, otherwise known as osteoporosis, decreased feelings of well-being, and decreased sex drive. Do you believe it? A lot of that list sounds like menopause too, huh? So what's going on here? Do you remember that I taught you in Tutorial 9 that all three of these hormones decrease during menopause? So sometimes there's some fluctuation. And sometimes your symptoms are a result of the dominant hormone. And so you're seeing that all of these lists have aspects of menopause in them. So you can kind of think of, of these hormones as each having a personality. And whenever you look at a list of the symptoms of excess or the symptoms of deficiency, you can match your symptoms to those lists. That way you can determine which hormone is causing your symptoms. So, you know me, I've made you a summary chart of all this stuff. Now, it's not in the book or in the outline notes, but it's available for you in the descriptive section of the video, and it's available on my website, menopausebarbie.me. Menopause Barbie, that's me. So here's the chart, and what you see is that I've made columns for estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and I'm just giving you the lists of symptoms for excesses and deficiencies of each. And you can see there that I've color-coded symptoms that appear in more than one list. For example, decreased sex drive. It's in red. And it appears as a symptom of both estrogen deficiency and testosterone deficiency. And fatigue is in orange. It appears in the list for estrogen deficiency and progesterone excess, and so on. Now, if your symptoms match one of these lists, voila, that's the hormone you need to tweak. Now, for the majority of women, there's a pattern to these lists. And the way it usually goes for most women is like this. The first thing is early perimenopause. And in early perimenopause, what you have is a deficiency of progesterone. So here's our French press with the multicolored scarf in it. Progesterone drops, and what you notice is irregular or heavy periods, PMS, anxiety, and migraine headaches. And then the second thing that happens is you have a deficiency of estrogen. So here's our pink scarf in our French press. The estrogen goes way down, and that's when you notice the end of perimenopause, the beginning of postmenopause, and that big, long list of symptoms that we associate with menopause. So that's when your periods start becoming farther and farther apart and you get the hot flashes of the night sweats and the insomnia, fatigue, forgetfulness, the loosens, the irritability, your joints hurt, dry skin, hair loss, vaginal dryness, UTIs, urinary incontinence, and decreased sex drive. And then, once you're fully postmenopausal, you start noticing symptoms of testosterone excess. Now, why is that? Well, it's because even though your testosterone has actually decreased, it hasn't decreased as much as your estrogen. So your estrogen level, I'm sorry, that's progesterone. Your estrogen levels are very low. Your testosterone levels are lower but not as low, and the testosterone becomes your dominant hormone. So that's when you experience the mood swings and the acne and the facial hair and the deepening of your voice, the weight gain, and the increased sex drive. 
Now, I say increased sex drive, but I have to tell you, not many women talk much about having an increased sex drive. <laughs> we'll talk about that later on in the tutorial. We'll talk about it in great detail. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, the symptoms of menopause are scattered throughout all of these lists and have to do with all of these hormones. Your body may not do all this in as logical a manner as I have explained it to you, but you can still use these lists to help you target the hormone or hormones that, were that are responsible for your symptoms. And I've made you a chart of that sequence of events, too. It's also not in the book or the, or the outline notes, but you can get it on the video or at the website. So here's the list. It's the sequence of events starting with low progesterone in early perimenopause, low estrogen in late perimenopause and early postmenopause, and higher testosterone at late postmenopause. Okay, now, before we end, I want to just give you a little preview of what's coming up in the next several videos. Today we just discussed excesses and deficiencies of these three important hormones in menopause, right? Now, obviously, if you happen to have a deficiency of one of these hormones, you might want to replace it, right? But there are many ways for you to do that. So in the next several tutorials, I'm going to show and tell you all the sources of each of these hormones in every category. So I'm going to give you dietary sources, herbs, botanicals, bioidentical hormones, and hormonal medications. And we'll go through each hormone one by one, covering all of its sources in each of these categories. So if you want to take estrogen, but you prefer a dietary plant source, you'll know where to find it. If you prefer an herbal source of estrogen, you'll know which herbs have estrogen in them. And then I'll give you all the details of the various medical hormonal estrogen sources also. Okay, we're done for today. I can put my hat back on. Next time, we'll begin our discussion on estrogen, and we'll talk about plant sources of estrogen. So until we meet again, bye!